Thank you, Sean, and good afternoon, everyone. Too many of us are dying at 20 and are being buried at 80. When I first read that statement in a book by Robin Sharma, boy, it made me sit up bolt straight and think about in my own life some of the areas where I might be asleep. You see, so many of the time we get caught up in living the social zombie syndrome. We get up, we do the same things the same way, eat the same things for breakfast, go the same way to work, go the same way to school, sit in the same desks, seats, desks at work, and we do things repetitively over time. We get caught up in subscribing to group think, getting caught up with what everybody else is doing and trying so gosh darn hard just to fit in. And it's only, what my observation is, is that most people only rouse slightly from the slumber when you get one of those birthdays with a zero on the end, or perhaps the clock has gone over to midnight, happy new year, what am I going to do this, for the next year? And let me tell you, when I was 17, I found myself, I just graduated from high school, and everybody I knew was going on to university and college. I had a scholarship, I had a bursary, I mean, I had golden tickets. Just go to university, it was all laid out for me. Something stirred deep within me and said, this just doesn't feel right, not for me. So it was one afternoon, I had come home, and uh, there my parents were sitting, my mom and my dad, at the kitchen table. And I threw down a couple of brochures for Australia. <laughs> What's this about? Dad. I want to go to Australia. I think I'm going to go early spring. Mm-hmm. Who's paying for it? I am, Dad. I am. Um, sir, um, oh, who, who's going to go with you? Uh, which friends are you taking along? I'm going by myself. I can't, I can't count on any of my friends. They're too caught up in figuring other things out. If I wait, I'll be waiting a lifetime before they come along. Fast forward to St. Patrick's Day the next year. I wanted to use a bit of the luck of the Irish to get me going to the place of, of Oz. And what was so interesting is there I was in Vancouver. I'd just gone through the security checkpoint at YVR, said goodbye to my parents, and then it hit me like this huge wave. I was realizing I was at the crest of going for something really big. My knees got really novelly, and I had to sit down. I was realizing I was going to the other side of the world where nobody knows me and I don't know anybody. I've got 700 bucks in my pocket and apparently this tiny slip of paper that says I can work in Australia, a working holiday visa. Oh man, what was I up against? And in that moment, I had a game changing situation. In my mind, I realized I had two choices. I could choose to sink or I could choose to swim. I could blow all my money in two or three weeks in Sydney, Australia, and never get up the East Coast, or I could choose to jump with both feet in and swim. And I am so glad I chose to swim. And in that moment, I had all those things you get, you know, when you're gonna do something really exciting, but you're kind of nervous too, or you get those little butterfly things. Do you ever get those in your tummy when you're about to do something really fun? Or you start getting a bit of sweat in the palms of your hands? That's what I call fraying the edge. It's that space in life where you are pushing your own limitations and stretching beyond your boundaries, where you've got that nervousness, but you've got even more excitement, and you're feeling most alive, and that's where the living takes place. That adventure to Australia not only taught me that I'm capable, I am more capable than I ever gave myself credit for, and by the way, all of you have that within you too. I became resourceful, I learned how to rely on me, and most specifically, the coolest thing that happened, when I was walking home from work, I was walking along the beach, it hit me. Gosh, you know, I have this huge passion for human biology, and you marry that with my deep-seated desire to make a difference, to help and serve people, nursing was it for me. I could not wait to get home and start putting that passion into action. And when I think back about it, had I gone on with the pack, just because everybody else was doing it, I wonder where I'd be today. Because what has unfolded over the last 13 years of my life and with this career, I have stretched beyond limitations, both personally and professionally, to places I never thought I would go to for myself. Euripides, the philosopher, said it the best. The wisest follow their own direction, and I couldn't agree with him more. 
Tool number one to getting your passion into action is to get curious. Get to that place where it's your adventure filled and your imagination can run wild. Daydreaming is your first class ticket to going to a land without limitations and swimming in a sea of ultimate possibilities. It's where you get to try on all of your different ideas, who you want to be, what it is you want to do to become. It's absolutely amazing. And I prescribe to my patients, you know, you know, daydream as much as you can. Now, UVic professors probably wouldn't really like that so much, but I disagree. I think you need lots of daydreaming often, often. And for those of you out there who think, gosh, you know, I don't even know what it is that I'm passionate about, here's a question that's going to jumpstart you into that thinking. If you knew that money was no object and you were guaranteed success, no failure, success, what would it be that you would most want to do? So money, no object, you knew you couldn't fail, what would it be that you would most want to do? That's a surefire way to start thinking about what it is that you're passionate about. Tool number two is to get laser focused. So now you've got that passion and those ideas, now you gotta start getting some meat to it. And what I tell people is begin with the end in sight. Think about you achieving your goals, your dreams, aspirations, whatever it might be, and get laser focused with it. And I mean getting specific. Who are you being? Who's around you? What are you doing? How will you know that you've got to that point of achieving your goal? Even what it is that you're wearing. Be as specific as you can. And the more time you can commit to actually thinking about it often while you're brushing teeth in the mirror, whatever it is, the more and more you condition it, it gets imprinted into your nervous system. And you see, our brains can't tell the difference of what's really real or imagined. And all it can tell is they sense that you're here and you've got this amazing vision and your brain now starts to think of different strategies to get you moving forward and progressing towards your goals. Pretty cool, hey? Now, number three, there is no use in having a passion all bottled up inside your brain. It's not like you can go like this, and you really wish it to happen, and then poof, it happens. No, you have to take massive action. And being an innovative solution finder is a surefire ticket to doing that. Now, most people, what they do is they see what it is that they want, but they pick just one way of going to achieve their goal. Invariably, fabric of life, we get challenges and little brick walls kind of come up, and these people keep banging up against the brick wall. They back up, and they keep doing the same things over and over and again, expecting different results. Doesn't work that way. Being an innovative solution finder means you come up with as many creative routes, pathways, roadways, strategies that you'll be able to get moving you towards what it is that you're most passionate about, your goals. And it is with that mindset that you can easily sidestep and maneuver around any of those challenges that come up. The more choices you have means you have more flexibility. And with being flexible means that you can be resourceful in any of those times. So it's an awesome thing to not only think about using this strategy when you're thinking about goal setting and putting your passion into action, but for everyday situations. I can't go without mentioning number four. Operating always on premium fuel. Can you imagine subsisting on those caffeine energy drinks, fast food, um, no sleep, working endless hours? First of all, it's not sustainable. Second of all, how many of you have been around people who eat nothing but junk food, don't exercise, don't get a lot of sleep? They're not a lot of fun to hang out with, hey? So you want to run the other way from those people, right? When you eat well, get lots of fruits and veggies, get exercise every day, our bodies are built to move, get your rest, and practice positive thinking, even what Gavin was sharing with us earlier. Those are the recipe, that's the recipe for success right there, because not only are you having even more energy to do what it is that fires you up and it ignites your soul, you can keep building with that, and so that when you actually do achieve your goal, you can enjoy it, whereas the other way, you'd be so sick and tired and stressed out, you wouldn't be able to even enjoy yourself. So operating on premium fuel is number one. The fifth one is a big one, living at cause. So many of us live at effect. And what do I mean by living at effect? I mean, we get caught up in the blame game. We play the, it's because of them, they, that, and it, that I can't be who I most really want to be. It's because my third grade teacher told me that I couldn't do it. It's because my parents said, 
that I wasn't capable. It's because it's raining and cold outside that I can't take an action step to making my passion come, come alive. And we get caught up into this learned helplessness way of thinking, and it keeps us stagnated to where we are. We literally, with carts, put all of our own personal power in carts and cart it off to circumstances, other people, and whatever other limitations they might put on us. You don't get anywhere by waiting around to being rescued or waiting for circumstances to change. You have to take action, and living at cause is a sure way, far way to do that. And what I mean by living at cause is to be standing firmly planted in where you are right now and taking accountability and responsibility for the role that you played for where you are today. And for me, it's like I look over one shoulder, there's the past, it's like, ooh, I made some interesting decisions. I learned my lessons, I'm still proud to be where I am today. Over this shoulder, mm, those were some pretty neat things that happened, still very proud. And moving forward, this is how I choose to be. Being at cause is the most powerful state that any of us can be in. Make sure you choose to dwell in this space as often as you can. So I'll recap the top five strategies for turning your passion into action. Be curious, just like the little monkey, be a curious George. Remember to daydream, get laser focused, be an innovative solution finder, operate on premium fuel, and be at cause. Dream big to play bigger, absolutely. If you dream it, you most certainly can become it. If any one person has ever done it before, so can you. Absolutely, success leaves clues. So if you find a role model in the area that you get fired up about with your passion, find out who's doing it. What did they do? What were the steps that they took to get to where they are today? Figure it out. Sometimes it takes people 20 years to, to get where they are. What's great is you follow what they've been up to and you can see how you can shorten that time to doing the same similar thing. And the biggest one is to get out of your own way. My goodness, the limitations we put on ourselves. We're the only ones who put them there. We put in the fences. We dig out the ground in our brains and put the posts in and put up our own little boundaries and fences that keeps us nice and safe. Settling for a life of mediocrity. You gotta get out of your way and into what it is that you most want to design for yourself. Jamie Paolinetti was a great American uh, competitive cyclist, and he said it best. Limitations live only in our minds. If we use our imaginations, our possibilities become limitless. The final point is to believe. A few years ago, I woke up with this great idea. I thought, I'm going to cycle the west coast of Ireland. <laughs> and as I was preparing for this trip, I had a lot of people saying to me, you mean you're going to put a bike in a box and go to Ireland and go cycle? Yeah, bike holiday. Bike's kind of an important piece of a bike holiday, wouldn't you say? And there I was. I didn't have the most fancy bike. I had the guy at the bike shop say, this is going to be the last time you use this tank of a bike. It was 30 pounds. It's an old school mountain bike. And he says, I'm worried about you, but we got your brakes going. And I said, perfect, that's all I need. I had hand-me-down panniers that had some big rips and holes in them, and I thought, perfect, I'll bring some glad garbage bags. Somebody said to me, oh, well, you're going to be all alone on your bike. Yeah, I've got red hair, I'll blend in, no problem. <laughs> it's all good, you know. And what was so amazing about this holiday um, was it was such, provided such a, a meaningful metaphor for life. There I was, guaranteed in Ireland, it's always raining. That's why they say they paint their um, houses with so much colors to make it more cheery <laughs> because of the weather. The rain, the wind, and all of these harsh elements. And there I was just driving and riding along, being fraying the edge and being so alive. It was a feast for the senses. And as I crept up these mountainsides and had the really fun descents on the other side, to the, handling all of the really strong headwinds, feeling like I'm only going one kilometer an hour. With anything in life, there's gonna be challenges that come your way and you always must believe and just keep moving forward. Believe that you can, believe in your capabilities, believe you must do it. Stay the course and hold the line no matter what storms come your way. The people I'm looking out in front of me in the audience, forget about tomorrow, you are the leaders and entrepreneurs of today. Your communities need to hear what it is that you have to say, what it is you have to share, what it is you have to create. The world is waiting. 
make it happen, start turning your passions into action. Thank you.